While we've seen flashes since he entered the NBA, Victor Wembanyama is really figuring it out right now. Since the calendar turns to 2024, he has been on an insane run and the game just looks effortless for him. I finally got to see him play in real time a few nights ago, and while a certain someone may have taken the spotlight, Wemby still played outstanding against a top defense. His San Antonio Spurs are an abysmal 8-35 and, and last in the West, but this shouldn't impact how you view Victor. He has been outstanding with not a lot to work with, including Jeremy Sohan starting at point guard for a good chunk. Today I will be going over the first half of Wemby's rookie year and how and why he's really turned it up recently. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. Smaller NBA YouTuber trying to grow, and without further ado, let's get right into the video. Through 29 games this season, Victor Wembanyama was having a decent rookie year, averaging 19, 10, and 3 on 44, 29, 78. This isn't anything out of this world, but more or less will be expected from a rookie in the situation Wemby is. While this is fine, there's a catch. As is, the Spurs are far from the most talented team in the league, but one possibly intentional move exacerbated this. The San Antonio Spurs were starting 6'9 forward Jeremy Sohan at point guard for a very significant stretch of time. I understand Trey Jones isn't the greatest shooter, but neither is Jeremy, and this situation never made any sense to me outside of sabotaging a likely bad year to ensure a top pick to put with Wemby. I can't hate that strategy, but I can hate how much it limited Wemby. Being a rookie big man who's a hair over 200 pounds without a point guard to get you the ball sounds like hell, and while his stats weren't necessarily bad, compared to what we're seeing now, they definitely are. In eight games since Trey Jones entered the starting lineup, Victor Wembanyama is averaging 25-9-3 on 53-32-86. While this isn't the largest sample size, it isn't the smallest either, and I haven't even mentioned the craziest part. In these eight games, Victor is only playing 25.2 minutes a night. As a rookie whose body is hardly developed, playing on even with Trey starting one of the worst teams averaging over a point a minute is absolutely absurd. Even if we include Wemby's whole season, the vast majority of which was played without a point guard, he is averaging .71 points per minute, which would have him right between Anthony Davis and Damian Lillard as a rookie on an awful team. Statistics are great, necessary, and can tell us many things, but to truly understand Wemby, you need to actually watch him play. This is a 7'5 man with better coordination than most 5'9 to 6' foot people watching this right now. One aspect of the Sohan PG stuff that I think could help Wemby in the long run is how it forced him to self-create. He's gonna need a point guard if he wants to win a championship, but this time right now will help him expand his game to maybe even become that himself. The scariest part about Wemby is that I have genuinely no clue what his ceiling is. I watch him and see someone who can score at will at all three levels while also being able to make reads like he's been in the league for five years. At seven foot five. Wemby's offensive package is potent and wowing, but his defense is also unbelievable. The over three blocks a game is great, obviously, but not even this encapsulates Wemby's defensive impact. This is another thing where you really have to watch to see. We have some level of defensive metrics, but very often they are poor at evaluating total defensive impact. The amount of shots Wemby alters or prevents from happening altogether is immense, and his presence throws a wrench in an offensive game plan. Obviously, this wasn't much of a problem for Joel Embiid, but come on, the guy's 200 pounds. The development of Wemby's game will be immense, but I'm curious to see what the approach will be with his body, as that will obviously factor into his development. I'm not sure if an Embiid transformation is in the cards, but I think that even if Victor got to 250, it would help his game a ton. I don't know what San Antonio's plan is right now, but if I was a Spurs fan, I'd probably trust them. While his rookie year does include a lot of minute and load management, which for the record I am 100% on board with, we are already seeing his star power pretty much whenever Wemby has matched up with the great bigs of the day. Wemby has not only showed out, but has also kept the Spurs competitive in games against Jokic, Embiid, Giannis, and AD. He steps up under the bright lights, and that is a great sign. I'm just going to go in chronological order rather than trying to rank these performances. The first matchup was in Denver on November 26th, and while this is pretty easily to me his worst performance of the four I'm going to review, how good this game still was should illustrate my point. In this matchup with the Joker, Wemby had 22 points, 11 rebounds, 2 assists, 6 steals, and 4 blocks in just 25 minutes while shooting 7 for 17 from the field, 2 for 4 from deep, and 6 for 7 from the line for a true shooting of 54.8% with three turnovers. This is the worst game of his four against the league's top bigs, and while his efficiency wasn't great, if combined 10 blocks and seals is his floor in this discussion, 
What does that say? This game was also the largest margin of loss in the four games, with the Spurs falling to the Nuggets 132 to 120. Next up is Wemby's duel with AD on December 13th. The Lakers barely squeaked out a three-point win, but this was one of the games in which we got to see Wemby play real minutes. In 33 minutes, he put up 30 points, 13 rebounds, two assists, three steals, and six blocks while shooting 11 for 21 from the field, four for five from deep, and four for seven from the line, making for a true shooting of 62.3%. While Victor did foul out of this game and have five turnovers, he still had a very effective scoring night while also showing his unreal steal and block potential once again. If you're counting, we are at 19 blocks and steals between these two games I've gone through so far, with him playing under 30 minutes a game between the two. Steals and blocks don't necessarily indicate a good defender alone, but these unreal numbers can help to emphasize Wemby's overall defensive impact for those who aren't watching every night. Before I get to discuss the game I witnessed, we have one more big man duel. Victor Wembanyama's national television duel against Giannis and the Bucks was an eye-opener for many and really helped to make people more aware of just how good this dude already is. In just 26 minutes, Wemby put up 27 points, 9 rebounds, an assist, a steal, and 5 blocks while shooting 10 for 18 from the field, 2 for 8 from deep, and 5 for 6 from the line for a true shooting of 65.4%. Once again, he had high turnovers and fouls with 5 apiece, but anyone watching this game saw a flash of what we'll be seeing next year and beyond. Victor went toe-to-toe -to -toe with not only Giannis, but also his rim-protecting counterpart in Brook Lopez. While the Milwaukee defense hasn't been what it was in years past, dealing with those two as again a 200 pound rookie can't be easy, but Wemby sure made it look like it. The Spurs would fall once again here by just four points. Finally, we've arrived. On Monday, January 22nd, Victor Wembanyama went to South Philadelphia to face off against Joel Embiid and the Sixers. Despite Embiid's gaudy numbers, this was a relatively close game through three and a half quarters and had a little spike at the end. While Joel Embiid obviously scored 70 points, and that's probably not the most ringing endorsement for my position on Wemby's defense, Victor was firing back on the other end. In 28 minutes, Wemby put up 33.7 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 blocks on 10 for 19 from the field, 2 for 5 from deep, and 11 of 12 from the line, making for a true shooting of about 68%. We once again see the high fouling tendencies with Wemby picking up 5 fouls, but I'm not too concerned about this. These are all games against the best of the best, high scoring, high paint scoring bigs. They're gonna draw fouls, especially on a rookie who's got a whole lot of arm to hit them with. The way he can just take over a game, even with a relatively abysmal team, just absolutely amazed me. He'll pull up from deep no hesitation, off the dribble or catch. He'll bring the ball up, run the offense, he'll post up, get to his spot, get a foul. There's really just no limit to what he can do. If he's under the basket, he'll just reach over you or around you. It's honestly hard to interpret what exactly is going on here. This isn't supposed to be how things work. You're not supposed to be that big and nimble while having the coordination and touch of a guard or a wing. If you're watching this before the Thunder Spurs game on ESPN on Wednesday night, please watch it. And if you're watching this after, please watch Victor and Chet for a matter of fact whenever you get the chance. These guys are the future of the league and the sport itself and are a joy to watch. And the constant comparison in sports media is once again hurting these guys. Before I discuss what I think San Antonio can, should, and will do, just one last thing on Wemby. I remember seeing him on social media three to four years ago and seeing this actually come to fruition is insane. He was the seven foot four all around demigod created 2K player and it's actually translating to the NBA. The elasticity of his body and coordination were the most wowing to me last night. I saw this man drop 33 and seven on 53, 40, 92 and got a glimpse into what I think will be regular for him sooner than you may think. Since playing with an actual point guard while still on a bad team, Victor is scoring over a point a minute as a teenager. The sky isn't even the limit for him. I don't even know if the galaxy is, but he's not gonna get there alone. I talked about the Spurs underrated and vast draft stash in my first ever video, and it's time to put that to use this offseason. The Spurs have some pieces like Devin Vassell, a top pick in this year's draft, and some solid role players, but it's evidently not enough. While I think they have some decent role players that could fill out a great roster, they're nowhere near where they need to be. The talk around the Spurs has been consolidating for an elite facilitator, and I wholeheartedly agree with this. There's one guy currently available that I might pursue if I was San Antonio, but I think there could be some heavy hitters that become available this summer. The first name is DeJounte, as the Spurs have expressed some level of interest in bringing him back as he is currently available. While I understand objection to this, you have a level of familiarity combined with a somewhat cheap contract. The Spurs would be able to get him back for a fraction of what they gave up, while also inheriting an extension that would probably have been much larger had he stayed in San Antonio. 
DeJounte has also improved his three-point shot immensely and his contract could be outstanding for building around Wemby. This is a lower cost option, both in contract and trade value. And while I think it would elevate the Spurs a lot, I'm thinking a little bigger. My main target for the Spurs is the Hawks' other star guard, Trey Young. His playmaking and ability to be an offensive engine alongside Wemby would be lethal. While I understand defensive concerns, Wemby will cover up a lot of that and I think the offense would just overpower. This deal would likely be centered around Kelton Johnson, another piece, and sending the Hawks their picks back. If he were to become available, I'd jump on it. He has his deficiencies, but very seldom does a true offensive engine become available, and when you have an elite rim protector to cover for him, it's not a question to me. Because this isn't a trade video, I'm going to discuss just one more guy. Darius Garland had a slow start to the season, followed by an injury, and while I don't know if he becomes available, he would fit the mold Trey does perfectly. I don't know what's going on in Cleveland at the moment, but I think Garland being made available this summer isn't impossible. I like his fit for more or less the same reasons as Trey, and while he hasn't demonstrated ability to be an engine like Trey, I think that's mostly circumstantial. To wrap this up, Victor Wembanyama is already a legitimately elite NBA player. I would say he is 100% all-star level and may even be a little bit more than that already. Wemby and Chet Holmgren, who I will also be making a video on, are in the midst of one of the greatest rookie of the year races ever. While there's arguments for either side, both of these guys are having historic years and I can't say I'd be opposed to a Grant Hill, Jason Kidd situation. Whether he wins the Rookie of the Year or not, Victor Wembanyama is everything we wanted him to be and more. I am really glad I had the privilege to go see him in these early stages because I know I'll look back on that night for decades. What I didn't mention is that's because my favorite player dropped 70. I'm halfway kidding, but come on, that was wild. I failed to see a real ceiling for Victor and this is where my shot comes in. I think Victor legitimately has the tools to put up 30 and 10 with 6 to 8 assists and all-time defense. I know it's early and insane to say this, but just know that you very well could be seeing the greatest to ever touch a basketball court ascend in front of your eyes. Putting that on Wemby is unfair, but another aspect of him is his mindset. Wemby appears to know how to block out the noise, live his life, and accomplish his goals. His level of maturity and perspective at the age of 20 is wowing, and I think this will bode very well for him as he continues ascending as an international superstar. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, hit that noti bell, comment down below what you think of Wemby's season so far. Again, you know, the efficiency to start off wasn't the greatest, but again, he's a rookie. You have so hot at point guard, bro. Like, that was wild. That was wild. Again, I like, you know, if you want to do that to basically ensure, I don't even know if they're going to ensure a top three pick because you got the Hornets. You obviously, you know, you got uh, Washington and Detroit who are probably locked into that top three. There's probably one more spot there. But regardless, you know, this isn't the greatest draft in the world. There's not like, I mean, there might be a guy. There might be one guy. But it's kind of moving around. I don't know, man. Uh, I, I think, you know, pretty much this is one of the rare years where I feel like the fourth pick might, you know, be the same as the second pick. Obviously, it's not, but it's not, you know, it's not how it is in years past where it's like, okay, we have, you know, these guys. I mean, we do have these guys. I, I don't know all that much about the draft, but, you know, if there was a clear cut number one, if there was a Wemby, if there was a Wemby or a Scoot, and I know Scoot doesn't look great right now, but I'm saying prospect wise, we would know. But that's going to wrap this one up for real. Good little tangent. I'll catch you on the next one. Wemby's unreal. I'm out. Peace.